Welcome to High Gluttony, everybody. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And it's the holidays. So we are Woo-hoo. doing some Buckeyes, aka peanut butter balls, <laughs> and making a delightful sugar scrub that smells like oranges. And uh, this was a this was a fun episode, wasn't it? I, I enjoyed this one. This was really fun. Yeah, this was super fun. We decided we wanted to make something. I had made peanut butter balls for a long time growing up and we wanted to make something that you could make for yourself this holiday season that was kind of easy and not too expensive and also if you wanted to gift these out they both work really well for that too and they were both so fucking delicious I could not stop eating the peanut butter balls and I do this every time I have them I will like eat them until I get sick and then do it again the next day and I just did that until they were gone and I could not stop (laughs) Good for you. I'm still working on mine because I ended up with 72. Oh Oh my God. Okay. We have to talk about this. Actually, I thought I was like, is it, was it 72? It's in the seventies. I definitely ended up with at least twice as many as you were supposed to be able to get out of it. Wow. And and it's still a bit of a mystery to me how that happened. We're going to have to do some sleuthing it out as we talk Mm -hmm. through this intro. The Buckeye recipes, we found quite a few that were very similar and two that we sort of settled on. We couldn't remember which one exactly we pulled the recipe from because they were both so similar, but one is from all recipes and the other one is from blog.herealtors.com. So we'll post those on the website. I can't believe it. It took me a while when we were doing the herealtors.com one to realize that there were, there are variations under that one as well. So like I hadn't noticed that they, they'd actually done that recipe then go out went, okay, you could do this with it and make it into this and do this. Uh, Lots of suggestions. Lots yeah, it was a good resource. Yeah, really easy. Very fun. We did uh, talk a lot. Well, maybe not a lot. We talked some about the tempering of the chocolate, but I don't, turns out I was less up to snuff on that than I thought. <laughs> Although I'm sure I didn't <laughs> claim to be some great chocolate tempering genius or anything. But I came to discover that, number one, I did it wrong because I did end up with a bloom, as they call it, on my chocolate. I have some pictures of that that we'll we'll post. Because then I also made chocolate somewhere around that time with a caramel center and made those, dip those in milk chocolate, not realizing that I was also doing the milk chocolate tempering wrong. (laughs) It's a, the process is the same about across the types of chocolate. Yeah, I, I did it wrong. So I basically did two version, two of the different ways that you can do it, but I smashed them together to make one way that does not work. <laughs> uh, so we, we were. It still worked. tasted delicious. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they still taste good. They look a little sad. And the chocolate won't have that snap that it's supposed to have. Um, but it still tastes like chocolate. So it's not like if you don't temper something correctly, people are going to be like, this is disgusting. It's still chocolate. Like, get over yourself. All right. Sometimes we have chocolate. It's different levels of chocolate. Okay. Like sometimes <laughs> you get the Hershey bar. And sometimes you get the stuff from the quarter store that's super fancy. Okay. Like... <laughs> I, I did a lot of research. delicious yeah they're very good yeah so that's why we love doing these intros after we finish making it because then we can find out if we did anything that we need to make sure you don't do so yeah. we're going to talk you through a little bit more of some of the things we learned so maybe we'll get it we'll we'll do the deeper dive on the tempering in a minute let's start with the the peanut butter part and how I do, I did mention the episode. I wasn't sure if I had said this. I knew I said it to you later, but I did in fact say it in the episode as well, that I was wondering if the additional volume came from the fact that I did make a little alteration to the recipe because I am always doing mad Gretchenist experiments and decided to <laughs> use caramel, the caramelized uh, sugar, granulated caramel, as we also like to call it, as part of the sweetener for it. Um, because that that works it's supposed to work the same as sugar now I I actually have to say I have now found two places where this sugar may not work 
part of why I think the sugar did not work with the Buckeyes is that in order to get a really soft finish, like like that sort of nice truffly finish instead of like a grainy finish, the care it needed to be ground down to a fine powder. And I just don't have the equipment to do that. My food processor isn't good enough to make it into a powdered granulated caramel. <laughs> That's number one. Wow. But I think if I if I talk about the other time the granulated caramel doesn't work. I'll be taking us off on a tangent. So maybe we'll we'll come back to that at the end of this and record a little thing that we can put out about it. So sh- sugar was one of the first things. Yeah. Was using yeah. the granulated caramelized sugar. So I'm not sure if just using that slightly larger size granule but ended up creating more volume when I whipped it or exactly what the problem is there. Um I mean, it couldn't be because I then ended up, because I didn't read the instructions so thoroughly, bought peanut butter that was not emulsified so that it separated. Like you get that oil that comes out of the, the peanut butter if you get that like not completely emulsified stuff. So I had not read in one of the recipes, they, they did mention that you needed that sort um, because mine ended up being a little bit oily. So I did try and add a little bit of cornstarch into it uh, to try and bring the oiliness down, which sort of worked, but I only added a couple like teaspoons worth into the mix. So I don't think that would have added enough extra volume for an additional 30 balls of peanut butter. (laughs) It's mind boggling. (laughs) Like, I I don't know. I don't know if it's because like, because I was like, I don't know, they're an inch across unless like whoever is writing, they should be an inch across has a totally different idea of what an inch looks like than I do. But I mean, that, that's about an inch. Like this is an inch. That is the one thing that my like work has given me is a really good sense of size. This is an inch, right? So just, just be aware that you could end up with exactly 30, like the recipe says, or you could end up with 70 something because who knows why. Uh, <laughs> I think I had like 35 or something, 37, maybe something like that. Being me, I tried to be fancy and buy some like Valencia peanut, peanut butter. And then came to find out like when I was doing research for this episode, because I was like, oh, I don't know that much about peanut butter. So I found out that peanut butter in its current form was actually invented in 1890, either in St. Louis, Missouri or Battle Creek, Michigan, which is where Kellogg's comes from. So I'm not sure if that's related. Could be. Cool. The book wasn't specific. And it's made by roasting or bringing the peanut. It just said bringing the peanuts up to an internal temp of 300 degrees. I was like, who's going around with the tiny thermometer making sure that all the peanuts are 300 degrees? (laughs) But there you go. And then you blanch the nuts to take off the skins, which is just dunking them into boiling water real quick, or even steaming them. They might may even just steam them now versus actually putting them in boiling water. And that the how they prevent the oil separation is they add in a uh, hydrogenated shortening, basically. So the palm oil that's typically found in a lot of peanut butter basically introduces a nice stable crystal. And this actually relates to the chocolate tempering because it's sort of a similar thing where the fat is a fat, a crystalline form of fat that then prevents the natural peanut fat oils from separating from the solid. So it basically just like enhances mm. the crystalline structure of the peanut fat. Cool. That's sort, sort of how Wait, it works. so so you <laughs> so you bring it up to 300 degrees, blanch it briefly, remove the skins, and then what do you do with it? And then you grind it with salt and sugar. Grind it, salt and sugar, and then and then you'd add that adding little... a hydrogenated shortening. Yeah, okay. at the end, it's three three to five percent. So it's a relatively small amount of the peanut butter, but you know we're all like no preservatives, no weird chemically induced things in my peanut butter. Turns out like those things can, those things affect what you do, your end product. Wish I'd read the instructions fully. <laughs> and then also wasn't a pretentious fuck and decided to use dark chocolate instead of the semi-sweet chocolate as prescribed. <laughs> Although that was less of an issue. <laughs> That's so interesting about that Kellogg's being from, like it's either from Missouri or from the same place that Kellogg's is from. There wasn't a lot of explanation. I mean, this is a, you know, a fairly intensive book on a wide berth of subjects. So I'm like, wait, tell me, tell me why this is. But 
I'll have to look into that later. Yeah, more to come maybe. More to come on that. And that there are four types of tip peanuts that we typically use in the U.S. The ones that come in the shell are usually a Virginia or Valencia. The type you typically find used for eating and nut mixes and candy tends to be Spanish or sometimes the smaller Virginia peanut because the the Virginia and Valencia are the largest ones. So that's why they're used as typically used as an eating, like in shell eating. And then the last type is runner, which is good for baked goods and peanut butter because it has higher level of monounsaturated fat, which makes it much more stable and less inclined to go rancid. So there you go. Fascinating. Virginia, Valencia, small Virginia slash Spanish and runner. Okay. Four common types of peanuts in the U.S. Now we know that. So I see that you're drinking wine over there, Becca. Did you know that peanut butter is notoriously hard to pair with wine? No. Tell me more. (laughs) I don't know why. I tried. I actually don't know why that is, but you said I should mention it. I guess I could have looked at that in my book. Well, I guess we don't have to say why. I just think it's interesting. And then when I was thinking about it after you said that it is notoriously hard to pair with, that it really doesn't show up very often in paired things. And so it made me think about it differently. Any peanut butter dessert, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Although I think that one of the common pairings is typically pork, which would be kind of the only thing you could put with this. But haven't done a lot of research on that yet. We'd have to Mm -hmm. see. So it was pretty smooth, though. You just, yeah. You just kind of mix up the peanut butter with powdered sugar, vanilla, and and then freeze it for a little bit. Butter, right? Butter. All the favorite things. Mm -hmm. Freeze it for a little bit and then dip it in chocolate. And this is probably a good time to talk a little bit more about tempering chocolate and what we did versus what you'd now recommend. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) there are three primary ways that you temper chocolate. Number one which was the, the seeding method, where basically you melt it over a double boiler. Hang on, let me rewind a little bit. Let's talk about why, why we temper before we get into how to temper. Oh, okay. So a little bit further, a little bit further back. Let's talk about the structure of chocolate. <laughs> so okay, when you make the way back. Confectionary chocolate, you are taking cocoa salads, cocoa butter, and sugar, typically are the main components. You said cocoa solids? Yes. Okay. For a second, I heard salads. I just don't, I didn't think you said salads. So I just wanted to double check you weren't saying cocoa salads. <laughs> like hell or high water now? Hell or high water and cocoa salads. We're starting a line of products. We're selling <laughs> water and, and cocoa, cocoa salads. salads. <laughs> Oh dear. Find it on the website. Yep. The the better your chocolate, the less other things it has in it. That's why like dark chocolate is generally considered like the the high-end stuff. And then you get down to like your milk chocolates and Hershey's, which are down over here somewhere. And white chocolate, which isn't chocolate. Right. Which chocolate isn't chocolate. I don't know. I don't know. And if we really wanted to throw another thing in there, we could start talking about ruby chocolate, but I am new to ruby chocolate, although they are using it all the time on the Great British Baking Show. Now, Hey, I'm, we're going to do a chocolate episode, I guess. Yeah, we are going to have to. I think we're going to have to, because I was like, as soon as I started reading into this, I was like, we're going to have to spend a lot of time talking about chocolate at some point. Because <laughs> there's so much to it. Here's something interesting to know. So when you see chocolate that's labeled like 70% chocolate, that means it's 70% cocoa salads and cocoa butter together make up 70% of what you're holding in your hand. And then the other 30% is sugar. Milk chocolate, you're adding some sort of form of milk. I watched a great video earlier today on uh, Sugar Geek? Sugar Sugar Geek Geek Show. Sugar Geek Show. She has a great video about tempering because I, I read all about it last night and I was like, I could use a couple of the resources. And so I was doing a little more research. Anyway, so you take, basically she took blocks and was like, you, when you have good chocolate, you're like, your fats 
and your cocoa solids and your sugar are all kind of all in order. The sugar is less of a complicating factor in this. It's really all about the cocoa solids and the cocoa butter because I feel like the sugar has very little involvement in the process because it's really just about getting the, the fat to go the way you want it. The reason you temper chocolate is to make sure that your fat crystals align themselves in a very specific order that gives you a nice snap. It gets a nice sheen. But as we said earlier, if you can't get it to temper, who fucking cares? Because <laughs> it's still chocolate. Because it tastes so good. Yeah. It tastes just as good. Texture might be that great, but whatever. Yeah. So you have three main methods of doing this. You can use a double boiler and then you take one of two reps. You're either going the route of seeding, which means you take into your melted chocolate, you add not melted chocolate because the, the not melted chocolate is organized. And so you're putting that in helps cool down and also present basically a model for your chocolate pattern itself out. So like it helps bring everything back into alignment in the right way. And then the other method has to do with a lot of stirring and then a, a lot more like temperature variation because you basically have three temperatures you have to hit when you're doing it that way. So you have to, you have your melting temperature, which is dark chocolate, with what, which was, was what I was using when we did this. You have to get it between 113 and 122 to, to fully melt. Um, and that's that because you got more cocoa solids to even than cocoa butter, but cocoa butter is still winter. Um, then you have to cool it all the way down to between 82 to 84 degrees. And then warm it back up slightly to 88 to 90 degrees. So this method is super complicated. Um, and, and it's the method that you see people when they're doing it like on a marble block, which is, they usually do that for like fudge and stuff, but like you could also use a marble block to temper your chocolate. And it's like, they swirl it all out and then they bring it all back together. And, you know, so that's what they're kind of trying to do with that. So yeah, so I, I wouldn't recommend that as your method. I think most of the time I've done either the seeding method or the microwave method. But in our recipe, when we did it, I tried to smash those two together because I thought that was the proper thing to do. Now, it's not totally raw, but if you do it in the microwave and you have the cool fucking temperature telling spatula that this woman has on the Sugar Geek show, you literally can just melt your your chocolate in the microwave and you literally just have to get it to 95 degrees where it melts. And then it's, it's basically you're not taking it out of temper. So you, if you can hit it to that 95 degrees where it's just melted, you don't really have to do all the other mucking about with the tempering. It's still in temper. You haven't really disrupted the, the structure of the chocolate. And so that's like way easier, which is, so that's what I was trying to do. Um, she was saying that if you're trying to do a lot of chocolate, it's not the best method because microwave, it'll heat everything up too much. But it really comes down to having an, a thermometer where, because even if you double boiler, you theoretically could just take it down to 95 degrees 95. and stop. But um, a double boiler is going to be produce more heat. So Typically, it's going to send it way up above where you need it to be before um, before you could catch it at that exact 95. So that's why it's not really the best way to do it. Um, now, you can temper using the microwave by melting the fuck out of your chocolate and then seeding it, which is like what I tried to do, but I did it wrong. Like, and I, I wasn't <laughs> aware of what I was really doing. So... <laughs> It's always an option to melt things in the microwave. That's always an option. Not right. always the most proper way to do things. Now, I did come across a recipe. I think it was Kenji Lopez had done. I'll have to make sure I look it up again. Where he he did it using a sous vide, which I was like, probably could do. Like, 
and so yeah you can you can use your sous vide to temper your chocolate like basically just putting it into a 95 degree water bath until it's completely melted and then taking it out and using it so does that 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 makes sense to me in terms of getting it to that exact temperature yeah but then I feel like once you take it out of the bag and put it into like a glass bowl or something it's probably gonna it won't hold at 95 for a while right so then do you like put it in the microwave if you need to melt it more or like what do you do with it after that first to to read um so I'm sort of wondering, here's my thought, is using a sous vide, you set it to a 95 degree, you put your bowl in there once it's at the right temperature um, and add chocolate. And basically you just make a water bath that's exactly the right temperature. Um, and just like you could hold it at a perfect melt basically. So I'm wondering why, if that's just not possible or what so i have to do more sipping so maybe well, right, so you can investigate yeah. right we the uh family i always made this with always did the double boiler mm -hmm. so i'm kind of wondering if because you freeze the peanut butter balls then dip them in the chocolate if that just basically takes care of your tempering uh, I didn't find a lot of information about tempering semi-sweet chocolate because there, mm -hmm. there's a whole chart here for dark milk and white, but not a lot of mention of the, the semi-sweet. Hmm. Well, that's interesting too. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of more chocolate exploring to do. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, it's so it, like, I love doing these kind of things and investigating this kind of stuff with like chocolate in particular, because it's something I take for granted. Like I, along with peanut butter balls, there's like four things in my life that like I cannot stop eating no matter what the circumstances, who I'm with, wherever I am. Like there's just like four things and it's peanut butter balls, queso, holiday shaped Reese's. And there's one other thing I can't remember, but I always, like I will eat Reese's and holiday shaped Reese's until I am sick. And I just take for granted that the chocolate is like, what it is supposed to be every time you know yeah. like the process that goes into just getting this little like peanut butter cup <laughs> to taste the same every time is pretty pretty cool well so part of that is also that they the can people who are producing candy on that big of a scale they have like machines that make the chocolate like hold at that exact temperature and then they do it this certain thing and this certain thing sure but they have the system down so it's so easy to keep that consistent totally product. but yeah it's it's a it, i mean i did see like some like what i did tempering chocolate earlier they were like there were these fancy equipment you could buy they're like fifteen hundred dollars that'll hold your chocolate at exactly the right temperature it's like it it's a thing it's really a thing yeah, it can get serious fast. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole thing. Although I came across a different article that said that if you're going to work with a lot of chocolate, that kitchen thermometers can be as much as like 10 degrees off. So if you're going to do a lot of work with chocolate, you should really get like a laboratory grade thermometer. Uh, wow. It, but if you want to check how accurate your thermometer is, all you have to do is put it into ice water and that'll let you know what let you know if your thermometer's off 32 degrees because you're trying to hit such exact little windows of temperature. Yeah, especially with that second one you said, which had those three different pretty specific ranges, especially that last one, I think, which was like 88 to 90 or something. That's really precise. Well, it, it yeah. So like your melting temperature has the biggest range, basically. It's 113 to 122. Then your cooling temperature, you're trying to hit it. It's basically two degrees because cooling to 82 or 80, between 82 and 84, basically 83. You want 83? <laughs> but that's a range. 83. And then your your tempering <laughs> range is then, yeah, the exact same thing where you want to basically hit 89 degrees. It's very specific. But yeah, like that yeah, cool. It's very cool specific. 
spatula with the thermometer in it, it sounds like a really good idea. I bought a really cheap one at one point. It was little. And the one she had had a really long handle and like, so that you could see the ter- thermometer gauge part. Like it was like in a hole in the center. Like that's the coolest fucking thing. Like I needed that for the caramels I made. Totally. Going on the list. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And it makes me respect more people who make homemade chocolates and stuff. It's oh. like quite a skill. It is quite a skill. I hadn't realized that dark milk and white chocolate all have different ranges where those things work. Uh, white chocolate is actually the most exact because you have to hit, it melts at 104. You got to cool it to 74 to 76 degrees. And then 80 to 82 is where it tempers. So much lower heat. Interesting. Here is what white chocolate is. White chocolate is the chocolateless chocolate because it contains no cocoa part- particles <laughs> whatsoever. So therefore, it has little to no chocolate flavor. White chocolate was invented in 1930 and is a mixture for uh, <laughs> a mixturefied. <laughs> I made a new word, everybody. Mixturefied. Mixturefied. Of, that's a combination of mix. It's mixture and purified. It's a mixture of purified usually deodorized cocoa butter, milk solids, and sugar, uh, does offer a valuable decorative contrast to ordinary chocolate, really chocolate. It's just cocoa butter. <laughs> but you want to know I what? Don't I don't like it at all. I saw the fucking coolest thing on the Great British Bake Off this season. One of the guys what? caramelized his white chocolate. So he basically made like a chocolate butter caramel almost. Which I'm now desperate to try and do because I was like, that's so fucking cool. Uh, sounds fun. Yeah. So I'm definitely like, I need to do that. And everybody's using Ruby chocolate. And I'm like, I don't even know what this is. I need to try this. I don't understand. <laughs> but it's very expensive. more to come. So yeah, that is tempering chocolate in a fairly concise nutshell. Maybe not the best concise description. <laughs> As short as I can get it. So I know more now. I hope so. I know more now than an hour ago. So that always works for me. You also know more about peanut butter and it's like and and thermometers. Exactly. We got into that too. <laughs> so totally. I love it. Should we move on to the sugar scrub? I think so. Yeah, I think it's time. But totally. anyway, sugar scrub. <laughs> talk about that sugar scrub yeah this was really fun I haven't actually tried eating it on toast my dad did just finally make bread today so I guess I'll have to try it on a little toast because I've got a jar the jar I haven't opened yet I did use one entire jar in the shower um already so if you guys (laughs) want to know if we like the sugar scrub we do yeah yeah we do yes it's it's so nice. I love it. I've already gone through half, like a jar to half of it. And I'm trying to keep some back to eat, but I am worried that I'm just going to have to make more because yeah. I love it so much. Yeah. It makes my skin so soft. It smells so good in the shower. It's really, really nice. Yeah. I, I think as the, it sat, you know, and like the, aromas all worked together like it was so it smelled so good and yeah made my skin really soft I don't think I was missing anything by not having the brown sugar I think it was fine with just white so if that's what she's got on hand just use white don't use brown it'll look weird like yeah yeah well let's back it up a second so we used a recipe or two recipes from Savvy Naturalista and we, her original recipe is called pretty in pink body scrub. And then she makes a version of that called orange sugar scrub that's edible. And so we did the edible one with just one change in that uh, we didn't use any food coloring and Gretchen didn't use brown sugar. Yeah. Um, just because I was like, why, why does it need to have color? And I'm worried that because food coloring is usually water soluble, it's going to leave color on your skin. <laughs> One advantage from using the coconut oil that I use 
is that because it's, uh, what's the word, solid at room temperature, that it stays mixed a little bit better. Whereas Becca, you were saying that you're separated some, right? Yeah, definitely. I put mine in jelly jars and the olive oil settled at the bottom half. And so I do have to mix it up every time I use it, which is not a pain, but it also, I feel like I'm trying to limit as much contamination in there and like mixing it up constantly <laughs> makes me feel a little bit like I'm not doing a good job of that. So it would, I definitely want to make this again and I'll try coconut oil that time. We do say in the episode, in the episode that um, the olive oil is a nice smell to enhance the orange. So um, that is one thing to consider though. Yeah. So for sure. You would lose that. You would lose that. Um, I just had a kind of a good idea about when I do like, um, you know, I, I make my own marijuana infused stuff and taking that and then mixing that with the sugar. So you could do a marijuana like body scrub uh and i use cocoa butter in that so like you would get a chocolate coconut sort of aromatic to that instead Uh of doing the orange yeah it smells really good so i might have to do that (laughs) that sounds nice yeah that sounds really nice yeah um yeah, it's fun. I think there's so much that you could do to explore with it. I, I did really like the brown sugar component. I think you had said in the, in the episode that that's probably there for texture difference, just as like an extra layer of exfoliation, I guess, or a different layer of exfoliation, but it's not totally necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, the crystals are typically a little bit larger on brown, some brown sugars than white sugar so I think it was just mostly like to have two different size exfoliants in there but I could be wrong about that <laughs> so <laughs> well we both liked it so it's pretty versatile this is a yeah. really excellent base because you can do any flavors you can do any sugar combos I mean I wonder I don't I like love the granulated sugar or granulated caramel sugar so much that I like can't really imagine just like scrubbing it on my body, but I do wonder what that texture would be like. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't think I'd recommend that just because it's time consuming to make. uh... Yeah. Oh, and if you don't know what we're talking about when we're saying granulated caramel sugar, toasted sugar, all these things, our very first episode we made this amazing recipe that Gretchen found, which was a process of slow baking your sugar into this incredible granulated caramel. And so we continue to use it in a lot of other ways and report back on it, but go check that one out. It's our first one. Yeah. Our very first episode. Hopefully our sound quality will be better by now, but (laughs) we've had to do a lot of uh, finessing with that. Sugar scrub and peanut butter balls slash black eyes. These are, this was really fun. It was, it was not that time consuming. It's definitely something you can do in an afternoon. You can do both of them in the same day or split it up, but it's pretty easy. And a lot of the stuff you kind of have on hand. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, like the sugar scrub, you can make it any time. It's literally take some sort of cooking oil, which is usually something. Now, let's just say, don't use animal fats. It's got to be a vegetable or nut fat. Do not use, (laughs) don't use duck fat. You can't have duck fat sugar scrub. That's not a lot. Okay. Um, (laughs) Mostly because your skin will just be like, what the fuck? You're just smearing duck fat on me. Why are you doing this? And be very angry with you. Don't do it. So, uh, but I mean, it's basically any kind of oil you want and mix some sugar into it and then something that smells good and then you're good to go. So super easy. Super easy. Super fun. Super delicious. What we really loved about it too was that it's edible. So we will yeah. report back once we've both been able to actually use it as a food. Yeah. But, but um, so far as a sugar scrubber, as a 
as a scrub, body scrub. It's been phenomenal. Oh and it gosh. tastes good, but I wash my face with it and I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. I'm like, <laughs> this tastes so good. I'm not worried about it getting in my mouth, which <laughs> isn't the same for all other scrubs. <laughs> I'd be a little cautious about putting it on your face, but I don't know. Really? I worry about the sugar part of it. Maybe it's not really a problem. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll uh, have to do some research, I guess. Here's the answer about putting it on your face first. It says it's actually too harsh for facial skin. So you shouldn't be su- sugar scrubbing. That's why. Oh. The, I'm guessing the granules are too large. Hi, Aria. Interesting. Apparently there's something called Calypso Kitty Body Scrub. So I'm guessing that's a no. Oh. I'm sugar scrubbing your cat. <laughs> How interesting. Uh, So we hope you enjoyed the episode and all this other information we just gave Mm -hmm. you. So let us know if you make it, how you do your chocolate, how it turns out, and how many you end up with, and what you do with your sugar scrub. If you make orange or if you make something else, let us know. Just tag us on Instagram or email us at highgluttony at highgluttony.com. Sorry, wait, I have to amend this now because there is apparently a soap you can buy Four cats of this amazing sugar scrub. <laughs> the average use is 10 to 12 cats or small dog. <laughs> this is breaking my brain. This is, should not be a thing you use on your pet. Aria, would you like to be oh sugar scrubbed? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and this is on Chubbs. Chubbs Bars is the name of the website. <laughs> Check us out on Instagram, on the website, highgluttony.com. We'll have all the recipes that we referenced and then all of our tips. And um, YouTube, we'll ha- we have videos this time. We're going to be sharing some uh, walkthrough videos. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye-bye. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Bye. Have fun. Bye. <laughs>
touch of cornstarch to make it come together a little bit. So I'm going to turn on my mixer now. Okay. Yeah, for sure cannot fit a double bath in this bowl. This is already <laughs> like, it's quite full. <laughs> so it basically has butter, unsalted butter, confectioner sugar, peanut butter, vanilla, and what else am I forgetting? I don't know, but I bought salted peanut butter. Ooh, sounds good. Oh, does all recipes say unsalted? No, it just says peanut butter. So you got unsalted peanut butter. Um, I don't know if I actually got unsalted peanut butter. I just remember it being unsalted butter. Oh, yeah. It does say unsalted butter. I did use unsalted regular butter. Well, there you go. I think because most peanut butter has salt in it. That makes sense. Yeah, I think I need to put a little cornstarch in there. Yeah. Yeah, because it definitely looks much wetter. I don't know. How's yours coming? Well, it still looks a little oily. Oily? Yeah. Hmm. So. How does it taste? I mean, it tastes delicious. What are you kidding? Yeah, I can't stop eating it. <laughs> I mean, it is a little bit grainy. Yeah. But it also isn't terrible, so. <laughs> I mean, it tastes really good. I'm going to read out the exact measurements. Okay. So this is one and a half cups of peanut butter, one cup of butter softened. Oh, it just says butter. One half teaspoon vanilla extract, six cups confectioner sugar, and four cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And then again, the first step, which is what we just finished doing, is in a large bowl, mix together the peanut butter, butter, vanilla, and confectioner sugar. As Gretchen said, the dough will look dry. And then we're going to roll it into one-inch balls place it on a waxed paper lined cookie sheet, put cute or sorry, toothpicks at the top of each one, and then put it in the freezer to chill for about 30 minutes. Or if you're Gretchen, you're not really sure what you're going to do because you don't have enough toothpicks. <laughs> you're going to make your own toothpicks too. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I do have some skewers in there, but. Uh... <laughs> Does vanilla have alcohol in it? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the typical solvent that they use to make vanilla extract is alcohol. Mm. So it's like almost a tincture? <laughs> yes, that is correct. Mm. But it is, it's a vanilla tincture. So we just decided for the next couple of weeks, we're going to kind of focus on some holiday kind of items or items that Gretchen and I have made around this time of year in the past. I'm excited about the next couple of weeks leading up to our New Year's release. <laughs> I know, it's going to be good. God, I don't even know why I thought I should do this. All I want to do is eat this stuff now. <laughs> oh man, I get to use my portion scoop. <laughs> what is this? Oh, well, this is essential for anybody that needs to make precision scoop if I can find it. And since I usually engage in some, there it is, some form of candy making or something at least once a year that involves making a certain size. So this is what it is. Oh, like a um, melon baller kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, sort of like, but it has a little swing arm in it so that you can push whatever is in it out. Nice. I have this coffee spoon thing that I'm going to use. <laughs> we went to the dispensary this morning. Oh, oh man. I know. It's been a long day. <laughs> Did you get anything fun? Yeah, we got all new stuff. We got um, mostly hybrid indica dominant, but we did get some sativa dominant hybrid. But let's see, we got a new one I hadn't heard of before, which is nine pound Larry. And then we got Skywalker OG. Yeah. Super excited about that. And then... What were the other two? I'll have to look them up. But yeah, it was fun. So how's it going? Your parents are there? They are. They're here. Yeah. My mom helped me out with my board today. Oh, let's see it. <laughs> You're going to love this. I have to take a picture of it for, at least for the blog. Ooh. And we even have our little dog with reindeer horns on there to spice things up for the holiday. I love it. And grids and everything. Oh, I've been working on my magnetic tape and everything. I love it. So what are you smoking? Have you smoked yet? I did. I did. I had, I was able to get more of those uh, Leun or Leun pens. Ooh, uh-huh. Finally. 
So I'm having the desert gold. And of course, I had some brilliant ideas today. So it was very exciting. <laughs> Have you had this kind before of theirs, the desert gold? Yeah. Okay. And that I like said it was really good for like doing the show, but I was going to have some pineapple haze in a few minutes. Yeah. So then once these go in the freezer to chill, we're going to start our second project of the day, edible orange sugar scrub. Also icing. Oh yeah. Also, I, I think you said like you could put half of it in a jar for the shower and half of it on your cinnamon roll. Yes. That is exactly <laughs> what I said. <laughs> uh, keep making saucers instead of balls or spheres i mean really it's your peanut butter candy you can see it however <laughs> like that's true just if you want it to look like a buckeye which right we're just gonna go i was trying experimenting with smaller smaller scoop but uh they're too small i think gonna have to eat those gonna have to eat them it's the only option so did i did i tell you the story about like how who i made these with every year my dad did not like christmas and it was a fight every year about whether or not we were going to get a Christmas tree or how we would celebrate it. Because I think I've mentioned before, they're like very Christian. And so my dad was like, we're not doing justice to what the holiday is about and all this stuff. So I would just leave and go to my friend's house who like their whole, her whole family loved Christmas. And so they had all these like traditions and they'd go, they'd sing carols on Christmas Eve and stay up until midnight and play all these games and make peanut butter balls. And so I'd go do that with her family. And that became like part of my Christmas tradition. Yeah. So it's it's part of your, it is part of your Christmas tradition. Yeah, exactly. Did your family make like a candy or a sweet this time of year? Uh, We usually just did cookies you know Mm, mm -hmm. since I'm going to be doing this for a while clearly yeah (laughs) so I I had a I feel really dumb and I know I that like every time I discover something new because I had never thought about measuring something that's like a powdery substance on a towel so that like if you you know so that you could easily clean up from oh mint and I was like I can't believe I just thought of that that's brilliant kind of thought of that before but actually I think well because I have a roll uh, one of the, that roll pad mm-hmm. typically that's one of the things I use to try and contain some of my mess <laughs> but not every has one of those right and towel says domestic AF <laughs> I'm roasting a leg of lamb so I'm doing it for seven and a half hours wow yeah it's in a low oven but um, I meant to do a, I'm going to put like a little bit of drizzle, like a um, an olive oil on it. I meant to start doing that and I hadn't done that yet. So what are you serving the lamb with? Uh, I'm going to cook some artichoke and some, I bought a ton of green beans today at the store. So I think I'm going to end up cooking some green beans too. Mm, I haven't had a fresh artichoke in a while. I just have to hear about it through you. I will tell you about my divine artichoke experience. <laughs> divine artichoke. Divine artichoke. <laughs> they are a beautiful vegetable. Yes, they are a vegetable. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I paused for a second. Like maybe not a vegetable. <laughs> not a fruit. A plant? Because I, I like, is it a plant? Wait, I forgot what we were talking about. What are we talking about? Artichokes. Artichokes, yes, they're a plant. Sorry. <laughs> like, what are we talking about right now? <laughs> what are words? Words. I don't know what those are. <laughs> yeah, no, they are. They're very. Wait, what did you say? I said they're really pretty. They are really pretty. <laughs> I have several artichoke glamour shots up in my house. I agree with that assessment. Does it say anywhere about how many balls you're supposed to have? Uh, I think it was said three dozen. Three dozen? Yeah. Okay. But I'm going to have way more than that. Okay. Oh, 30 portions. 30. Okay. How much are you? How big is it? One inch balls. Oh, never mind. Okay. Mine are over an inch and I'm still getting, going to get way more than 30 pieces. Interesting. 
Oh, balls. <laughs> so I had another good like stoner thought today with something that I would find useful because I kept trying to measure my sugar by using a half cup measure, but that I keep losing count. And I was thinking about those drink stir like toothpicks we saw the other day where they had like taken the little Christmas trees and glued them onto a skewer. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, you could make like counting sticks with little things stuck on the end so that you could just like, if you were, and you'd have like a little count thing. Oh, an abacus. That's a good idea. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I have 28. You have, oh. so far I have 24. I'm on my way to 36. Okay. And I'm going to blow past that by a few miles, I think. Okay. Now I'm really confused as to how yours, like, how, why, how, why do I have so much? Like, why don't you have more than I do or the same amount as I do? Didn't we just make the same amount of dough? How are you done so quick? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, this is all very weird to me too. Cause I'm never done before you. <laughs> I'm outraged. I'm just outraged by this. Like, how are we going to solve this? I don't know because I'm going to I am going to be here doing this for a while. I gotta finish up this. I'll have at least 48 on this little sheet pan that I've got going right now. Wow. I still had to make some more room in my freezer. I'm just rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. This makes zero sense to me unless my six cups of partially powdered sugar makes that much of a difference. You mean because you did like more granulated than powdered yeah. yeah I can't figure out what else it could be although when we made our caramelized sugar the first time when we made it one time everybody and then the audio wasn't great so we recorded it again and when I made it that first time I swear it like doubled in volume from what I put into what I had for the next couple of months like or weeks or whatever but I was like I don't know how I have so much all of a sudden. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Um, now I'm just like, in, they're increasing in size steadily because I'm like, otherwise I'm gonna <laughs> like an hour. <laughs> <sighs> I gotta go find some place to put it in the freezer. <laughs> so did you put your toothpicks in yours? Did you actually get toothpicks? I, do, I have toothpicks, but I um, haven't put them in yet. Did you already put yours in the freezer? No, because you put the toothpicks in and then put it in the freezer. <laughs> I just thought you'd put them in the freezer. Oh, no, sorry. I just was making room to make sure I could fit them with the toothpicks in. Oh, right. Well, I don't have that problem. Having no toothpicks, I don't have that problem. So. <laughs> Good news is, is that I have chocolate dipping tools, so at least I should be okay. Yeah. Gretchen will always find a way. I will. From hell or high water, I will. She is determined. Well, I guess we just have to keep in company until I'm done doing this. Not a problem. So we're at 48 so far. I guess <laughs> double this recipe. Yeah, you ended up doubling it. I don't know. I don't understand. The cornstarch wouldn't have made a difference, right? Not significantly. I, no, like there's no, that's not going to generate <laughs> the volume that you had. Right. <laughs> so I'm thinking it must be the, the sugar. Mm hmm making the difference here probably wouldn't been smart to like sieve it a little bit is it important to sieve your sugar well powdered sugar it depends on, it depends so something like this where you're just like beating it into your fat mm -hmm. not, it's not really gonna matter when like you haven't really done anything that required sifting yet on the on the show mm -hmm. um, so like usually when you're sifting things you're either trying to incorporate air into the ingredients so like that's when you're sifting like cake flour and things like that. You're trying to actually, A, get any lumps out. So like that's your main goal. And then it does add like it makes it lighter. So like it just sort of helps lighten it up and separate the particles and yada, yada, yada. Got it. But something like this, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it because you're just mixing it into the fat. And so like you should be able to like have any chunks would break down particularly in the mixing bit of it, so. Okay, but you think it might have helped a little bit in this situation with you? Right, especially if I put it through my um, 
word I'm looking for, my tammy, because it's got a really fine mesh. So then I could basically take the any larger particles out. So only like the smallest stuff would get through. So I wouldn't maybe necessarily have as much graininess going on in this either. Mm-hmm. So we're at, all right, well, now I'm getting, I'm, I'm using a different pan. So I'm getting eight in each row so far. Okay, I have 56 now. I'm not even measuring them. I'm just trying to make them like fairly consistent size, but I also maybe a little bit larger so I can finish this in a reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. We could talk about peanut butter. Such as like, why does Jiffy not require any stirring and why other nut butters do? Although I'm not a hundred percent sure I know the difference I guess yeah because it because these recipes say it's important not to use like a peanut butter that can like naturally separate (laughs) well I am fucking up all over the place here that because my Trader Joe's Valencia peanut butter was definitely separated so (laughs) that might be part of my problem uh with the oiliness all right so we've got Okay, we even solved one mystery. Got Check. it. <laughs> Will you be what's in like Jif peanut butter and then tell me so that I can yeah. I can remember if I remember what the deal is with okay. that? Well, I mean, the hydrogenated oil was always like the big thing with those peanut butters, right? Yeah. So and like so Hydrogenated oil is basically chemically treated to be to not separate in water. Mm. Look that up too. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the ingredients in a jar of Jif are roasted peanuts and sugar contains 2% or less of molasses, fully hydrogenated vegetable oils. I hate saying this word out loud, but rapeseed and soybean and mono and diglycerides and then salt. So 2% or less of those last ingredients. Okay. So that's, that's where you you your emulsifiers are, because that's basically the difference between having something like my Trader Joe's peanut butter, which has an oil layer on the top and your gift, because they are basically chemically stabilized. Um, so I'm sure that might be making some have, it has some effect on what I'm doing over here. But that just goes to show you like a small, how even a small thing can affect a much larger part of your recipe. Uh, Right. And with something that has such simple ingredients, it's interesting how specific they still kind of need to be. Yeah. So it would have been great had I just bought Jif peanut butter when I was at the store or something. (laughs) But no. I was like, I like Trader Joe's peanut butter. So I'm going to buy peanut butter Trader Joe's. So I can't find an exact thing about what hydrogenated oil and water is, but this says basically from healthline.com that food companies began using hydrogenated oil to help increase shelf life and save costs. Hydrogenation is a process in which a liquid unsaturated fat is turned into a solid fat by adding hydrogen. During this manufactured partially hi- during this manufactured partially hydrogenated processing, a type of fat called trans fat is made. Ah, okay. Oh, that's where. All right. It says it results in a higher melting point, higher solid fat contents, and a longer shelf life without rancidity. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, that's basically your your emulsifying agent is that the hydrogenated oil is like it basically works as like sort of a a binding of for lack of a better term sure well so the peanut butter i got though is not jiff it has palm oil instead and it was pre-mixed well that's funny yeah so i was a little worried about it too we'll see how it goes though because i was like oh it's not a hydrogenated oil we'll see what happens but so far they look okay so i've managed to get to four plus eight 74 what how wait 72 sorry okay I, <laughs> I really don't know I have 32 in this pan right now and I have a little bit more dough to go wow 
I'm going to go take a picture of these before they go in the freezer because I can't comprehend what you're saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I should <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, I got to take this batch to the garage. Okay. Are you, so you're putting them in the freezer? Yeah. Okay. I have to take my ice cube tray out. <laughs> oh. 30 minutes. Uh, yeah. Okay. I actually had to take something out of the freezer in order to get it in there. All right. So I'm going to make a half measure of this body scrub and I'm only using white sugar because I don't think I have any brown sugar. Okay. So before I do that, I'm going to go get my pipe and the, my pineapple haze. So I'll be right back. Okay. I'll, I will do the same. Uh, oh, sitting down is nice. <laughs> Delicious smelling pineapple haze. Ah, I meant to eat some mango before we started. Oh, I did. You did have some? Yeah, I think it worked. Really? That's so exciting. Yeah, I bought four packs of dried mango. Well, they're so good. I, yeah, that's part of it. Oh, one of the other strains that we got was Slimer OG. I'm sorry, Slimer? Yeah, like from the Ghostbusters. Oh, Slimer? S-L-I-M-E-R? Yeah. That's kind of hilarious. I know. And I was purchasing everything from this older woman and she was like, is it slime? And I was like, well, the website says Slimer. And she was like, like the Ghostbusters? And I was like, you're, it's not my website. I don't like, I'm just telling you what I can see. And you said an older woman? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So that's what I'm smoking right now. Nice. You got a lot going on with the peanut butter and the lamb chops. I mean, uh, is it chops or like a lamb? Loin? Leg, that's right. Leg, leg. Oh, you know, I wouldn't know who I was if I wasn't making things complicated, remember? <laughs> Good point. Nice thing is I cleared up a couple of storage containers by uh, using up the last of that sugar. Perfect. Well, I think the next is fairly simple. So I didn't realize that the recipe wasn't, the recipe we focused on doesn't, isn't using coconut oil, it's using olive oil. So I think I'm going to use coconut oil still. Awesome. And as you can see by my ingredient board up here, I have orange blossom water. Mm. No real water. <laughs> uh, it actually has propylene glycol, alcohol, orange oil, and natural flavors. Uh, I see. It's 45% alcohol. Wow. The only thing I could find was non-alcoholic orange flavor, and it's mostly sunflower oil. <laughs> see, and I was thinking that I could even take like some coconut oil and like zest some orange into the coconut oil and just let it cook for a little bit to like get the oil out, then strain the actual orange pieces out because that's where you're gonna like find the pieces bits that might go bad more at least a lot more quickly. Um, because the oil can go bad, but that's going to take a lot longer. I, guess, I see. But then I remembered I have this in the cupboard because I forgot to look for orange flavoring earlier, which was, I guess, good because I have this and this should work. So Yeah, perfect. Are you going to do food coloring? Wait, should we read through what the ingredients are? So so we're using a recipe from Savvy Naturalista, and it's a homemade sugar scrub. She has like we're using her orange version, which is based on her pretty and pink version. I think it's her. I don't know. I'm just assuming it's her from Naturalista. But um, her original recipe for the pink scrub is one cup light brown sugar, one cup white sugar, one half cup olive oil. And then with the orange one, you add two tablespoons of orange peel, one tablespoon of orange extract, and 10 food coloring drops of orange oh so it still gets zest in it too i see it does yeah but gretchen's doing coconut oil instead and orange blossom water instead of extract right right and and wait sorry so are you doing food coloring no i i will not be doing food coloring Okay. I've been debating because when Gretchen and I were talking about this idea, Gretchen said, will it make your body turn that color? And so now I'm kind of nervous and I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to put the food coloring in. I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay. Even though I am the person that uses overtone and doesn't use gloves, 
So my kids <laughs> are always like some like shade of purple or blue or something. So okay, I'm not gonna do it then. Yeah, I I was like, man, no, that's completely. I don't I don't need that. Why risk it? I'm I'm drinking some bourbon and it's in a mason jar, and the pre-measured olive oil for this recipe is in a mason jar, and I keep trying to grab <laughs> the olive oil, which wouldn't be terrible, but <laughs> would be different. Not what you're really looking for at the moment. <laughs> so really, I've simplified mine down to just the sugar, the oil, and and I'm doing a half batch because I was. I'm curious to see how long it lasts. Mm-hmm. Although I have a feeling I'll use it to go back. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll use it for, there are no guarantees. Right. It may end up on toast. That sounds good. I pray that maybe, maybe pineapple haze is not hitting with me today. Mm. So I am doing brown sugar and white sugar. And so the instructions are to mix the sugars together, then add the olive oil, and then the... I think I'm going to do what you're thinking, though, and put the orange peel in the olive oil and then add that to the mix. Oh, yeah. I definitely think we should mix all the wet ingredients before we mix them into the dry. Okay. So I wonder why the brown sugar is important, because the only difference in brown sugar and white sugar is molasses, right? Um, Texture, I would think. Um, Texture. most brown sugars are ground a little coarser. Oh. So they just have a bit more body to them, I guess you could say. Got it. I came in here for something. Oh, I was going to try one more time for the brown sugar. I was like, I swear, I have, there's no way I don't have brown sugar. This just doesn't make any sense. This would be unusual if you didn't have something. Okay. Well, I just spilled sugar all over myself. Awesome. You're doing it yep. right. Must be high gluttony. Hey, guess what I just found in my cupboard? Brown sugar. No, more powdered oh. that I didn't think I had. Oh, well, good thing you didn't try to make more than what you did. I mean, I know it wouldn't fit in the bowl, but you ended up with double the count size, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. More than because I think it said 30 pieces for and one inch across balls. Like how, how am I messing that up? I don't know. I mean, you're not. Oh, I just don't believe it. I don't believe I don't have brown sugar. Of course, you know, I'll find it as soon as I'm done with this. Yeah, that's always how it works. Or as soon as you buy another one. Yeah, that's actually the more likely scenario. <laughs> I know. And then I'm like, maybe I'll just buy two because I hate when this happens. And then I'm like, well, fuck. Now I have four. four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know this thing because I think I was looking somewhere in my kitchen that wasn't my pantry and discovered that I had another five pound bag of sugar so I think I have I have so much sugar in this house right now yeah and I found after I looked in my pantry place and found another five pound bag of sugar and and then I'm good on sugar for a little while yeah I think I I told you on one of the last ones too that I really needed garlic powder, but instead I kept buying onion powder instead. And so now I have all these bags of onion powder hidden in places. And James keeps going like, oh, did you know this is up here? And I'm like, oh, thanks. And then I just put it somewhere else. <laughs> that happens with a lot of my herbs too. <laughs> you know, it's hard sometimes to keep inventory and smoke <laughs> well this is my brilliant counting stick idea you find mm-hmm. you okay i go with my counting sticks and i'm envisioning because now i'm decided that this is like something i'm definitely doing having you have your two two little containers attached to each other and you put your all your sticks in one side and then as you count you can put them into the second container and that way if mm-hmm. you're spraying in multiple locations you can count like that yep as I said, abacus would also be an effective tool for this. So, right. Really smells like lamb in here. All right. Mm. Something. I was doing something. All right. <laughs> Stay together. Apparently, now I'm hyper. <laughs> Guinness? The get, uh, maybe it is. Must be. Must be the Guinness. The, get, the Guinness mango pineapple haze combo. Apparently, hyperactivity. 
Yeah. Tropical and Irish. <laughs> Equals hyper. <laughs> hyper. So I'm going to be a bit of a rebel. And I'm putting all my wet stuff together. Oh, I need, that's what I keep going for. I keep going to go get an orange because I bought oranges. <laughs> oh, it's a deep red orange. Oh. Pretty. Well, I don't know what it looks like on the inside yet. But it is kind of... <laughs> It is definitely has a blush on it. It's cute. It almost looks like a like a pink lady apple color or something. It does really look like my orange is blushing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a shy little orange. It's a shy orange. Are you what kind of are you using a microplane for this or I've got my fancy microplane that has its own thing attached to hold stuff. What? Yeah. So I don't know how accurate the measurements are because it does have measures on the back, but I don't think they're very accurate. So I don't use mm. them. I just use it as a, a to catch things. Got it. We need two tablespoons. You're doing half. It def- this definitely smells a bit like a grapefruit. Interesting. How far down can you grate on an orange or, you know, t- of the peel? I mean, the lighter the color, the more bitter you're going to get. I see. I ba- I basically like barely took off the outside of this one. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to put some cloves in this orange. Yeah, I am. In it? Yeah. Have you ever done that? Uh-uh. Oh. Well, Tell that's... me more. Let me introduce you to one of the easiest, most Christmassy things you can do. Okay. This thing you didn't know you needed in your life. Let me tell you. Uh-huh. I don't know why we've always done this in my family. I'll have to see. It's sort of a British thing. Okay. I think, but you just take like whole cloves and push them into the skin of the orange and you let them, they like, you can keep them around. Like they kind of just dry out. Mm -hmm. Although this does end up being kind of painful for me. Oh, to push those in. Yeah. Do you want to do a lot? Are you kind of trying to like cover the whole orange? Yeah. So like last year I did where I just like put like a line or two down like on quarters. And then I've done some where I've like made like little swirly patterns on them. Mm, Cool. I've definitely like completely covered an orange before. Of course. (laughs) Since we're deciding to talk about weird Christmassy things right now. Yeah. (laughs) Like there's definitely like the pointier cloves are much easier to do this with. They're Um, like little tacks or something like pin cushions. This is just one of my favorite smells in the whole wide world. Cool. I sometimes will just put like like quarter an apple mm-hmm. or two and throw them in some water with some cinnamon sticks and nutmeg oh. and just let it simmer throughout the day and just keep adding water and let that smell kind of permeate the house. Oh, my timer's going off for the... Oh, for the balls? Peanut butter balls, yeah. Well, leaving them in the freezer a little longer won't hurt them. Um, yeah. Okay, I didn't quite get two tablespoons, but I have only one orange. All right, well, I didn't put a ton in mine. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to be doing later. Okay, so then you so you put the so you put push the cloves into the skin, and then you said you kind of let them dry out for a little while. Yeah, they just kind of hang out and they like dehydrate. And then you use those. No, then oh, you know, I just put them in the rest uh, the compost. It's just, mm. just kind of a fun, nice smelling thing. Oh, that sounds great! I want to do it. If you have inedible oranges or something this would be a good way to use it up. Use one. Oh, Orange peel smells so good, and what? it's important to have citrus in the winter time. Yeah. Another good tip. Oh, and as you said in our our caramelized sugar episode, that um, toasting that sugar, caramelizing that sugar makes your house smell amazing during right. the holiday time. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to make some more tomorrow. I need to make some more of that. I need to make some ginger beer. Yeah. I got a lot on my list for tomorrow. <laughs> I also have been wanting to make the Detroit style pizza. Again, we will release that episode someday. At some point. Yeah. It's really good. Oh, it's so fucking good. So our orange peel is grated. I put mine in my oil. Okay, I'll follow suit. So this peel isn't going to like spoil or anything? So that's where there's a bit of a a toss up. I think this person's sort of anticipating that you'll use it before it'll go bad. Got Uh, it. So that's kind of why I was like thinking earlier when I wasn't sure if I had something, if I cooked the peel kill off any bacteria it might be introducing i mean it may not be a bad idea to throw it in the microwave for a second and zap it i might do that okay i'll do it too how long are you gonna do it for 
Well, I have 14 seconds left on my, my cycle. So I'm just going to go with that. Cause I don't really want to heat it too long. 14 seconds. Yeah. At high temperature. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I might have spotted a re- one reason that they might use olive oil in this recipe. Is the now I I did buy some other coconut oil when I was at the um, store today, and it's a triple filtered one, but it doesn't smell like coconut. And I was like, I want it to smell like coconut. <laughs> so I need. I see coconut oil. So, I was, but you were saying you see why they wanted the olive oil you, for yeah. the smell. Yeah, so that if you wanted to feature that orange smell more, that would be why one reason to use olive oil because olive and orange go really I mean it's not like it goes badly together but they're both Mm -hmm. strong scent so you know it's like um, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say they kind of like bring out each other now I've just added my orange blossom water okay yeah all right my orange flavor is going in uh and then I guess gonna start adding my sugar because I'm I'm don't want to make another dish dirty so like I don't sugar into something else and then are you whisking it or just stirring it? Stirring it. Okay. Is it okay for me to put liquid into sugar instead of sugar into liquid? Yeah. Okay. Later. I didn't know if we had to do it as okay. I don't think so. That's why I said I'm okay. being possible by doing it. This okay. <laughs> Got it. I'm done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ta-da. Just have to put it in a uh, in a jar. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Just to scrub my hand. Yeah, gotta test it now. So, best guess on how long you think this, or, or how quickly we should be using this before there's a potential to go bad? I would say a month. Okay. But as I said, I'm curious about putting the orange zest in it. Right. So, you used it real quick. How was it? It's nice. Just the right amount of oil. Smells pretty good. I'm sure it'll smell better later once it's had time to sit together. Mm hmm. And storage, cool, dry place, cool, dry place. sealed container. Yeah. So mine's like a really cool dark color because of that brown sugar. Mine's just kind of pretty white with a little bit of an orange tint or a, a, more like a yellow tint. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Thanks, Savvy Naturalista. <laughs> we had a hard time finding uh, recipe sugar scrub recipes that didn't have an essential oil in them. Yeah. So if you don't care about being able to eat your body scrub. Right. <laughs> necessarily saying I really need my body scrubs to be edible, but let's right. not, we're, we're not going to get into that right now. Right. Um, this is a food, food and cannabis podcast, not a sugar scrub podcast. <laughs> not, it is not a sugar scrub po- podcast. <laughs> Just because we're more focused on the food thing. That's why we wanted it to be also something you could eat. Yeah, exactly. So I may be putting that on some toast later. Mm, that sounds yeah. great. Do you have a glass bowl that you could melt your chocolate in? Or do yeah. You- okay, great. I have a big one. Okay. I wonder if I should do a smaller one, though. Will that fit in your microwave? In the microwave? Yes. Awesome. Great. We're in business. Okay. So we're not going to do double boiler kind of thing? No. Not if we can. If Microwave better. No. <laughs> okay, great. Because it's faster. All right. So, um. Hold back three quarters of a cup of your chips. Your or do, do you have dark chocolate or semi-sweet? Semi-sweet. Okay. One moment, please. Okay. And it's four cups. So if we didn't totally say the next step after we get the peanut butter balls out of the freezer, melt the chocolate, dip them in the chocolate. Pretty sure. easy. I want you to hold back about three quarters of a cup of the chocolate chips because we're going to uh, temper the chocolate. We're going to melt most of it. Okay. And then add some back in to bring the temperature down a little more quickly. I'm going to start my chocolate off for about 30, probably going to go in 30 second vert. Okay. Did you already get your peanut butter balls out of the freezer? Are they still in there? No, they're still in there because this is going to take a minute and they're not big. So I want holes. Okay. So does the kind of chocolate make a difference in the amount you want to hold back? No, I was actually checking to see if you... If there was some, for some reason that you wouldn't need to temper semi-sweet chocolate, but uh, it said yes. Oh, I see. Okay. You're doing full heat in the microwave, 100% or like the highest level? Half heat. Oh, that's right. Sorry. 
Do you need to stir it at all in between the 30 second intervals? I'm not going to start stirring it until like it's a bit more melted. Um, just because if you stir it too much, then it clumps all together at first. Okay. So you kind of have to just like, I just shake it a little bit before I put it using a glass bowl that it'll, uh, it'll hold the heat a little bit more. I think maybe my next after this go around, I want to start stirring. So how many minutes was that? Uh, I, I'm at, at least two. I think this okay. is around. Okay. Since mine was completely melted through, I'm adding my unmelted chocolate. Did you end up doing the full amount of chocolate just because you had so many peanut butter balls or did you half the chocolate too? No, I didn't half the chocolate. I'm doing the full amount of chocolate for the Buckeye recipe. Did you half the recipe? Oh, right. It's the sugar scrub. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think I'm that stuff hit me harder than I thought. I don't know why I was still thinking you were half halfing it. That was the sugar scrub. Like, wait a minute. Did I something major here? No, I'm just confused. How do you know when to stir it? I mean, like, it really melted around the sides. The chips are intact, but you can tell that they're warm. Like, you know, that warm sort of look chocolate gets? Like a softer kind of look? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm about to start dipping. Are you going to put them back on the same parchment sheet? Uh, that was my plan, yeah. Um, oh, well, that might be my plan, but I don't know that that's what I'm going to be able to do. Because on this sheet pan, it will be a little tight. Well, mine might have a more thorough chocolate coating than they're supposed to. But Okay. But I'm not going to be able to get them all back on the same sheet pan. Okay. <laughs> I might get out a second board or something. Well, I can see why the uh, toothpick is a superior tool for this job. And the dipper thing you have? Yeah. I mean, it certainly makes it a lot easier. I also might have gotten my chocolate a little cooler than I should have. Should I heat up some more or? Um, but I exactly had four cups. I just kind of guessed on my chocolate. So. Okay. Probably okay. okay. I wonder if maybe one of the benefits of doing it on like a stovetop or like a double boiler is to keep like a consistent heat on the chocolate. Yeah, but I think it would be too, and maybe I can't disagree with so many home cooks that have done it for so long. Maybe that's not my place. Because <laughs> <laughs> did it say to keep it on a double boiler? Yeah, it says in a double boiler or in a bowl set over a pan of barely simmering water well i wonder partially wonder if that's part of this is that they're frozen so mm -hmm. the chocolate cools a lot faster so you run less risk of that of the chocolate breaking mm -hmm. when you say breaking what does that mean so the the fat will bloom out of the chocolate as it cools okay have your chocolate tempered i see i think a couple of years ago some of this the christmas gifts i gave away might have had I can't remember exactly what that was. Might have been had the chocolate break when I was doing it. So I see. Are you dipping yours yet? Not yet. I've been. I just added my um, oh, you're not hot chip. Oh, I just want to eat them right. Now. Oh, oh, okay. I'm completely covering this one. All righty. All right. Here we go. First try. Oh my god. One. <laughs> So if I, if I need to heat the chocolate up again, that's okay. Just do it again for just like 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too, too hot, too fast, you know? That makes sense. Cause that's what the, the breaking thing happens. Right. Okay. Should have done some, some Harold McGee reading before today's episode. Ah. But uh, we can put it in the intro. Yeah. That's why we do the intros later, everybody. We can tell you what you might need to know. Yeah. After we listen and we're like, we didn't say any of the things that are important. Yeah. Mostly it's more like to clarify this real quick. Yeah. So I'm going to warm mine up again. Okay. I think I am too. What flavor is the caramelized sugar adding? I don't know. I don't know that I've had these enough to know. <laughs> there you go. I can tell you they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently that's it. They're delicious. Eh, they're so good. So lots of dipping. How many do you have left to do? Are you going to do them all tonight? Well, I don't think I, I have enough chocolate to do them all tonight, unfortunately. Might get my first tray of 48 done. That might be what I get done today. Yeah. I know I'm going to be tired after I'm done with this tray. Yeah, totally. How are your hands doing? Oh, they're all right. Ooh, 
one of my toothpicks broke. Oh no. I know. A little bit like making caramel apples. Yep, basically. Be kind of fun to do some like crushed nuts or something. So I hadn't looked down further on that blog post that we, the realtor blog post. Uh huh. They like have all these different suggestions of like basically like coconut cookie ball whatever then white oh yeah cool yeah because i was looking at it because it was like spice up that buckeye recipe and i was like huh and further okay. article i was like oh <laughs> that's what they meant got another one that's going totally covered in chocolate <laughs> and i'm surprised at how clean i am considering i'm working with melted chocolate but I also definitely can see where like being able to dip it in with a toothpick is going to get you round eye. Yeah, totally. Yeah, for the most part. I'm getting kind of low on my chocolate now, so the eye is getting bigger as I go. But yeah. um, So what are you going to make for Thanksgiving? Oh, uh, so I'm going to get a duck. going to go pick up tomorrow. We're having macaroni and cheese because mom wants me to have macaroni and cheese. Mm. Yum. Then we're going to do something with squash. <laughs> uh, did I tell you a farmer's market today? You got what? A black truffle at the farmer's market. <gasps> you did? Mm-hmm. Oh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Yeah. I mean, not quite as nice as Paul's white truffle they brought last year, but, you know, can't get that Still. in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2019 was very different. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're doing duck with some form of potatoes, probably mashed. Mm. Duck, I'm going to make a cranberry tart that I did. Um, I first time doing a recipe test for Cook's Illustrated or America's Best Kitchen or something. Yeah, I'm getting low on chocolate. I might not even get all the way through my first, first board. Of- Your first sheet? Well, that is still you still made a lot then. Well, I also think because they're frozen, and I went through the effort of tempering the chocolate... They're getting maybe a bit of more of a coating than they normally would, a thicker coating. I see. I'm on my last one, and this one and the one before are starting to slip off their uh, toothpick. So just time. I'll tell you I had a neighbor named Justin Time. No. Yeah. He was like a kid, and my dad used to always be like, I can't believe they named him that. I just can't believe they named him that. <laughs> it's particularly cool, you know, to name a kid that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, oh no, I was going to say Sir Barristan's name at this shelter was just in time, but no, his was just in case. Oh, that's cute. Mm-hmm. Sir Barristan fits him well, though. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm helping myself to more. Yeah, how, how can you not? Sure. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Good. I guess we got to take a picture, huh? I don't know if I really want to take a picture. Oh. They're messy. They're very, very, very messy. My stuff's usually pretty messy. How many do you think you'll get through? Or how many do you have left to, how much chocolate do you have left to get through? Oh, not very much. I have glasses maybe. But no, I've just decided to go full chocolate robe because it's easier. There you go. So the recipe says to refrigerate until serving. My friend's family used to keep them in the freezer. And I never liked them frozen. So I would take them out and just let them sit out for a little while to get to room temperature and then eat them good for you uh, thank you i mean i'm sure they just can't imagine they're bad either way Mm-mm. but you can also keep them in the freezer you don't have to just keep them in the refrigerator i say i might like mine better from the freezer because they'll be like little ice cream type things you know that peanut mm-hmm. butter center mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, now i've gone back to making eyes because i forgot yeah and in that case that like thicker uh-huh. <laughs> I was saying it in that case, the ex, the chocolate layer is kind of nice. It's like a dip cone or something. What were you saying though? Oh, I'm I'm rolling. I'm just gonna roll one so that it has an eye on either side. Hmm. I'm a, I'm playing now. I'm just playing. Uh, Fun. So, yeah, I was like, oh, maybe I can get a few more out of this. So it's like, well, I think it might be, it might be at the end. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There we go. There we go. Peanut butter balls or Buckeyes, as some people might know them. And orange edible sugar scrub. Yeah, because why well, pick a lane and stick with it when you can do two different things? <laughs> exactly. Mm. Ooh, that's nice. 
Yeah, I have some milk chocolate chips. Maybe I'll do two. Oh, that could be good. Mm-hmm. I may just put these in the fridge for now. And then once they're hardened up again, I could put them into a container and put them in the freezer. That's so why I wanted to mention I tasted some of my sugar scrub with my Guinness. The Guinness really brought out the bitter in the orange of the sugar scrub. Not sure I'm really doing it any favors eating these peanut butter balls and then <laughs> and then drinking the Guinness. So, uh-huh. Not great. You got a lot of flavors going on. Oh, yeah. Probably too many. This bourbon's actually not that bad with either of them. It's not as good with the peanut butter, but it's kind of good with the sugar scrub. Well, peanut butter is like notoriously hard to pair with stuff for some reason. Really? A reason for that that I could find out by the internet. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe maybe by the intro we'll, we'll know. We'll know. But yeah. But let us know how much yours made. If you got the right amount like Becca, <laughs> or if you got twice as many like I did. Oh my God. Sorry. I just took a huge bite of one. <laughs> Don't worry. I did that a couple minutes ago. My mouth is full of it. Yeah. Let us know. It's easy and it's complicated. Yeah. Really easy if you just follow the, the instructions that every online recipe gives you, as opposed <laughs> to Gretchen's trying to be <laughs> about her shit over here. So. <laughs> So this is coming out yeah. in December, mid-December, right? Yeah, the December 10th. Yeah, December 10th, exactly. So at this point, when you're hearing this, we'll be well into the holiday season. We'll be well into the COVID season, probably. Oh, seriously. Oh, my God, yeah. All right, well, this was delicious. This was so fun. It was so fun to make something that has such nostalgia for me and to do something totally new with the orange scrub. Yeah. Well, I'm always a fan of a good edible scrub, so. (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for joining us once again. Check us out on highgluttony.com where Gretchen's always sharing recipes and our versions of things and um, YouTube and Instagram all at High Gluttony. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.